something that would come up. Like in politics, we call that like oppo research. <laughs> and I could just imagine someone's oppo research folder having this photo in it. Do you think the way these images are sensationalized is different for men and for women? Definitely. I think that we know that like women's bodies are just seen differently than men's bodies. And as much as a man's career can be ended by an explicit photo, he's never commodified in the same way that a woman who has a photo leaked is. A woman who has a photo leak becomes an object. When a man has the same thing happen, you still hear a lot of the like rumblings of like, oh, like look at him. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the the player versus the slut. And you encourage women, um, actually, to release their own nude photos. Explain why you think that's a good idea. And not so much encouraging people to actually like leak their own actual photos. I'm encouraging people to talk about having them. The second that you are able to claim that in your own story and to put it into context and to say this is a normal thing, the power of it starts to drift away. And what do you think about the way that the media sensationalizes these images? It's evidence of how the media is still mostly run by older white men who see women in this way, right? That the prevailing narrative is still, uh, look how scandalous this woman is, instead of look at what someone did to her. Now that you've come out publicly and acknowledged that this picture is in your past, would you reconsider running for office? I think the thing now is I actually feel like I have the freedom to make that choice. Like this one thing was kind of the brick wall in front of that path, and now I feel like it's a knockover. over. That's Ashley Fairbanks. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. edition who's tearing up the internet in mexico a grandmother she makes her own youtube cooking show at her home in michoacan complete with chickens fruit trees and the fresh tortillas she makes by hand oh my gosh i think she's amazing why everybody loves doña angela that's tomorrow you can tune in by asking your smart speaker to play npr or your member station by name to Weekend Edition from NPR News. The recent blackouts in California have millions of people looking for ways to keep the power on. Some brought portable generators, but there was a huge spike in interest in another technology, solar panels and home batteries. Lauren Summer of member station KQED reports. Power is out at every house on this block in the Berkeley Hills. You can tell because all the cars are parked outside the garages because the garage doors won't open except for one. Hi there. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hi, Lauren. The lights were on at Howard Mattis' house during the last PG&E outage. His fridge, which you can see, fully powered and cold. That's because inside his garage, okay, we can go up here, are two Tesla Powerwall batteries, about four feet tall, mounted on the wall. The whole house. Everything. Everything is powered by these two batteries. The solar panels on his roof keep them charged. Solar alone won't usually work during an outage because it's still connected to the grid. 